So we're going to talk about successful rapid prototyping and what that exactly is. And what that means is that in practice, we're going to talk about why you should prototype, what are the reasons for doing that, how to succeed in that, and why, in order to succeed, you should do that prototyping with Re React Native. And after that, once you've kind of figured out that React Native is going to be the thing that you use, we're going to look at what tools you should use. But before we go into that, I'm going to give a little introduction to myself. So the reason for my really difficult name, Perttu Lahteen Lahti, is because I'm from Finland, which is, by the way, celebrating its Independence Day today. Uh, yeah. And I'm a developer slash designer at a company called Nixo, where we build personalized sleep coaching uh, programs in a mobile app. And the reason why I know a lot about prototypes is because I've taken part in 70 hackathons. I've won about 40 of those, so I've been also successful in those basically competitions of building prototypes. But let's get to the subject at hand. So why prototype? Uh, reasons for that are pretty simple. When you're starting from scratch, you of course, want to maybe try a new technology, or you just don't know what is going to happen next. You might not have no idea what you're going to do, what you're in a building, for example, a client project. and in in total, the path is not that clear on what you're trying to achieve and what direction you're trying to go towards. And that's exactly where I started about a year ago when I was hired by two university researchers to commercialize their sleep research. And I went to the first meeting, and they were like, build us a product. I was like, OK, uh, can you be more specific? And they're like, build us a product that is nice to use and makes money. I was like. That doesn't really make it any more clear, but I decided that I might as well start by building a prototype. And actually, I built three prototypes. The one you see on the left, we actually decided to experiment how people would like to see their sleep data and what, what kind of presentation types work and what, what, which do not. On the, left, uh, on the middle one, we actually tested out how you should provide sleep coaching content, so exercises and lessons on sleep that is actually engaging and interesting to use. And on the right one, we actually tested that if you could make it in the game. So every night you would basically sleep, uh, try to sleep really well so you could actually compete against your friends who slept the best. <laughs> yeah, really nice. <laughs> Turned out when I was researching the technology, what should I build this with, that I'm really bad at developing mobile uh, stuff with iOS and Android. And React Native was kind of a perfect solution for that. Not just for because of a prototyping, but also like building the eventual end product. Because it's really easy to build, it's really fast to build, it's even faster to deliver, and it makes it really easy to measure everything. But let's look at why it's so fast to build. So you can kind of use any basically UI component library. React Native paper is pretty good, I've heard. I actually like to build them myself, because it's easier to time box everything when you know that, OK, it will take me this much time to build that. Uh, but you can get pretty fast and do some pretty cool stuff really fast with React Native just because you have already existing skills from React and JavaScript. Maybe even cooler is actually delivering fast. And this actually saved our butt when we were testing one of our pilot products with the largest life insurance company in the Finland. Uh, on Friday, I got an email that, hey, this feature doesn't work for me. And I was like, we didn't, never agreed on that feature. So during the weekend, I actually built it and released on Monday. Without React Native, I wouldn't have been able to do that, because the usual way you do it through App Store Connect and Play Store uh, is really painful. It takes a lot of days for Apple to look at. But using we used Code Push. We were able to push the code to the users, and they didn't even notice that the feature was missing. And actually, on Monday, I got an email. Sorry, it might, might not be my device that it didn't work. Expo is a pretty good solution also, uh, offering you the same capabilities of pushing code basically over the air. Uh, and React Native remote, uh, Firebase offers the remote config. It doesn't allow as much as code push and Expo, but you can still make some changes on the app on the fly, which is pretty cool. My background is in actually in, uh, I used to be a carpenter for seven years. And a lot of things we used to talk about that measure always twice. Once I transitioned into the technology, it turned into measure everything, what the user is doing, how long they're doing it, and what they're doing. So in prototyping, see, your product is only as good as the results and feedback you get. So you have to measure everything. So in order to do that, there's some really good tools. Amplify Analytics from AWS, that's good. Firebase Analytics, basically Google Analytics, great as well. And the App Center analytics that we used in our process was excellent, in my opinion. 
And there was actually a really nice hack that we used in order to kind of find this hidden information. So we wrapped all the components that weren't supposed to be clickable or, or pressable with touchable fit without feedback and made them emit an analytics event to our back end to see which parts of the app or UI users were pressing, expecting them to do something. So for example, here you can actually see uh, there's a couple of things about your sleep timing and stuff like that. We had a lot of users pressing those, although those were supposed to be static. Uh, which ended up that we realized that we have to build something that they can actually find more information about their sleep. So that's a cool hack. Don't do it in production. It actually uh, is really bad for accessibility. But in a prototype, we'll do fine. So to recap, build fast with paper or by yourself, because React Native is pretty good for that. Deliver fast with using Expo, M App Center, and what is this, Firebase, and measure everything. Yeah, that's all I have. My name is Bertolatana. You can find me on Twitter. Thanks.